inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to Night Brothers Hobbies. Today we are painting the big bad boy, the ogre from Mage of the Mirror. Uh, this is the first time we get to see ogres for the new version of the game. And actually, in, in I think the old version, this was the first time we got a glimpse at the big boys coming. Even though he might be considered a little plain looking, uh, I do like the new updated sculpt. Uh, I like it a lot better than the old one, <laughs> the old goofy one. Let's paint him. So this guy's got a lot of skin going on. Um, that's probably what attributes to his plain look. He doesn't really have a lot going on, but we're gonna use all that skin to try out some new things and to really make him look uh, like different, right? We're gonna make him stand out. That's that's what's gonna make him uh, pop on the board. Is we're gonna we're gonna make his skin look really really cool or try to just do something different, you know? So we're starting down here with some Gulliman flesh, and this might seem business as usual, but it is quite the opposite. We're putting this down to tint the undercoat so that what we put on top will have a sort of warmer uh, tone to it. And yeah, we'll go from there. Man, you want to take this show and just roll it up in a gigantic paper. So once you've laid down that Gulliman flesh all over the place, we're going to take Wraithbone and dry brush him up to just bring up uh, the midtones a little bit uh, and, and just brighten him up again because we are going to put another contrast on top. We don't want to darken him, darken him, darken him. We do need to brighten him up a bit. But those shadows that are already zenithal and nice and, and juicy and anything else that stays that Gulliman flesh red uh, is going to... Add a, a nice fleshy, warm red kind of tone to it. And here we go. We're putting Iandin yellow on this guy. We're going to make him a fleshy yellow black color. <laughs> that, I don't know really how to explain it other than black. Uh, I thought that this would be really cool uh, for an ogre skin. Is kind of like that weird... Uh, almost like moldy flesh, right? Like it's just, it's strange to look at, but I didn't want him to be uh, outrageously yellow. So that's why we're experimenting with uh, some warm undertones and, and we're gonna layer them up to make him less, uh, I guess, farm equipment or, <laughs> or neon yellow. Here we got some red for his hair because uh, in the artwork, he's got a red mohawk. And this is one of those things that I really liked about the new sculpt is kind of adding on to that personality. They could have just put a mohawk, but they chose to, to really make it something different. We got some snake bite leather for our wooden handle, and we're going to do that big belt underneath. Uh, the, the big chunky thick one is going to be snake bite as well. Wildwood for the thin belts. He's got a couple of them wrapping around himself, uh, especially the the thin belt that goes over top of the thick belt, and that's how we're going to break them up and differentiate them. So all the belts are going to be this wildwood. All the thin belts are going to be the wildwood. Basilicanum gray now for all of our steel metallics, starting with that big old axe head. He's got a little pommel at the bottom of that uh, axe handle. And when you're doing the belt buckle, there's a little skull inlay inside of it that has some horns. So be careful not to paint those horns with your Basilicanum, although you can easily clean it up. Don't worry. Uh, but <laughs> if you can, avoid it. Otherwise, clean them up. And then he's got that shoulder pad too. Skeleton Horde here for all the bony bits as well as his dominant loincloth. So this includes things like the accent on the belt buckle, the skulls at his hip. Uh, you can see here the big loincloth on the back as well as the droopy drapey one on the front. Uh, we're also going to use this for the fur trim and the little bony spikes. Agrax Earthshade coming in to just give us a little bit of a different brown. You could totally use Gore Gruntor, really 
any other brown you want to use for these little spots here. All right, coming up with the layering, we have Wraith Bone. We're going to use Wraith Bone a lot for our layering. Uh, so much so that later on we're going to use white because it's just too much Wraith Bone. Uh, so Wraith Bone for the um, Skeleton Horde Sepia uh, loincloth parts. We're also going to use Wraith Bone for, um, you can see here, the fur trim. If you want, you can do the fur trim here. I end up going back later with a white, so you could ignore that. We also use it for the skulls and the bones and that little accent uh, on, on the belt buckle. Now here's where we're gonna be end up using Wraith Bone a lot, a lot on this miniature. Uh, we're gonna use it to highlight up the skin and we're gonna bring the skin back up uh, in those most raised areas using a couple layers thin of the Wraith Bone. And this is gonna help him look less like <laughs> like a caution sign, less saturated, super yellow. This is gonna help break that up because again, I, I didn't want that for this guy. I didn't think that was the look. I didn't want him to be like just a yellow goblin or a yellow orc. I wanted him to be yellow flesh, so to speak. So doing that is gonna help mute it down and uh, give him some more range. Gunmetal, of course, for all of our metallic steels going all around. One thing to note though, we're going to avoid the axe head because I thought it would be funner to make that axe head look more worn and rough. So we're going to do something different for that one. Then as always, all those parts you did in the gunmetal, we're going to do with our Null Oil Gloss, if you have it, or just a shade and then a gloss varnish brushed on top. All right, here's that axe head, and here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna give it a bit of a dry brush with bold titanium white. We're doing a sort of non-metallic metal look that we've done before, and that's gonna help make this uh, metal axe look a little more um, rough, I figured. Uh, it would make it stand out against his metallic armor and uh, give him more points of interest. And here you can see I'm going over the fur with the white because I thought it didn't stand out enough. I thought he was pretty, everything was along the same tone and we needed to break it up a bit more. So I went in with white and that's why we're doing his teeth with white too. And that's why we didn't really shade them down with anything as well. And then of course, white for his hair highlights to give him that sort of anime hair look. Just going around the mohawk and then a couple little points on the ponytail as well. Coming back in with Gelman Flesh, we're going to use this to accentuate some of the shadows and the recesses on his flabby yellow body. And this is going to add and accentuate that fleshy look we're trying to achieve alongside the yellow. So our Wraith Bone is going to give us those uh, highlight range, right, and break it away from the yellow so much. And then we're going to use this fleshy tone in the, the shadows to further in the opposite direction, take him away from just plain yellow. This is also gonna give us some, some cool range in his toes and, and hands, make him look a lot more, like more blood is flowing through him and his knees and, and stuff like that. We can also do his lips and his nose and, and give his face some more dimension by just putting in some of this red tone in there. Areas that you think uh, could use some more detail to it or or that would have uh, blood flow too. Uh, so ears as well are a good one uh, too. You can think of anything that would have maybe a subsurface scattering look. Lastly we've got chrome here to pick out all of our small tiny little pling plong dings of <laughs> highlights on our true metallic spots.
Then we finish it off with our usual basing, gray paint, texture paint, dry brush, wash, and a dry brush. And there you have it, our cool yellow flesh ogre. Uh, I thought it came out pretty good uh, for a first time going around with this idea I had in my head. Just sort of winging it and, and going off feel, pushing it forward and pulling it back where I felt uh, it needed more of this or less of that. Uh, you could see that in the, um, the Wraithbone highlights and the, the Gullum and Flesh shadows and stuff like that. Uh, just sort of playing around. You can do that too and, and really experiment and, and figure out like, how is this going to work, right? Uh, how can I do that? Here we go. We have another ogre. This is more of like a Warhammer kind of ogren flesh, right? They're more like ready sort of tanned guys. Uh, I used the same recipe that we had for the 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 red yeti, I guess, right? That we did before, the, the yeti with the red skin. I did the exact same thing except all over his body and of course gave him a punky green mohawk with a ponytail. Uh, but you can see how that really can change how it looks and, and you can really just experiment on the fly. Uh, I, I wanted to come up with something darker and I thought, hey, let's use that that Yeti I did and see how that looks on an entire mini. And hey, it came out pretty good. With the ogres out of the way, we just have two more miniatures left in the Mage of the Mirror expansion. So stick around for those coming up. If you liked the video, let me know in the comments down below. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. You want some game stuff, check out my Twitch. I'll see you later. Bye!